We have to be careful who you allow to touch your life. As a person, you are a limited resource, who only has a limited amount of time. And there are people who come only to drain you, drain you of your time and energy. Others are discouragers. They challenge your every idea, your dreams or aspirations. Then there are those who complain. Everything around them is wrong. Except for them, of course. A psychologist by the name of Timothy Wilson, when talking about how other people can impact you, said, Researchers have found that the number one predictor of how happy people are is the quality of their social relationships. But it says that if you're a person who has good social relationships, you've got a good network of friends, the toxicity level is low, the health level is high, you're going to be a happier person. All of us can say this morning, I could use a little bit of happiness. And not only has research shown that, but, but it, it has also shown that these types of people tend to live longer. And this doesn't really have to do with the Bible, like we're not talking about the scriptures here. But just, just people who have observed human nature have noted that the positive benefits that come when we have good, healthy, life-giving type relationships. So now think for a moment, if that's what psychologists are saying based off their own research, research that's not biblically based, research that's not taken into account, that 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 says, be not deceived evil companions, bad company, wicked friends, corrupt good morals or good character. If the Bible hasn't been taken into account from a worldly point of view, but the research validates this verse, then us as Christians need to just be on guard. Because imagine the spiritual impact that toxic people can have on you. Okay. That's what Rick Renner said. He gives us biblical steps on overcoming difficult people. He says, refuse to be offended. I refuse to be offended. And what I mean by that is that I don't take it personally. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, no matter how outrageous their behavior is, no matter what they, they insult me with or how they act or react or how they look with their body language. When people are rude, they are revealing themselves not you. They are telling you what's in them, not what's in you. When people are mean, when people are controlling, they're not saying anything about you. It doesn't say anything about you. It says about who they are. It tells you what their problem is. Isn't that true? Have you not experienced or seen that? Hurt people hurt people. Toxic people tend to have something internally that they are dealing with. But as mature believers, we must have the love of Christ and not be offended when we encounter certain types of people. When it comes to relationships, being associated with, being in agreement with, or being unequally yoked with a toxic person can impact not only your faith, but also your life. Now, not only is it important for you to practically in your everyday life pursue health, your relationships. It is also important for you spiritually. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 12, I want to hit on this lightly, he said, in everything therefore treat people and he's summarizing. He said, treat people the same way you want them to treat you. Now, this is the golden rule. We know this, we, we, we should treat other people the way we want them to treat us. And so the central truth I want you to take is this, that how we relate to others influences how we relate to Jesus. Christianity is at its core a relational religion. When Jesus gave the great two commandments, he said, he said love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Those two commandments are relational in nature. If you're a follower of Jesus, how you treat people says more about your faith than the following. It says more about your faith than how often you go to church. 
It says more about your faith than how many times per week you read your Bible, how emotional you are when you sing, how heartfelt you are when you pray, how much money you give to the church, how long your quiet times are, how many people you witness to, how many Bible verses you post on Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat or TikTok. <laughs> now, we too need to be honest and examine ourselves first. Because everyone knows a toxic person, but no one will ever admit to being a toxic person or having a toxic trait that they at least want God to remove from their lives. No impossible toxic people will, have, will allow you to make decisions and evaluate if this person will add or subtract to my relationship with God. If you get into a relationship with a toxic person, those toxins do not stay to themselves. Those things are transferable and toxic people can ingest their toxins to you. And if you're a person who has a bit of bitterness and you spend a lot of time with bitter people, the bitterness they have transitions into your heart. If you spend time with people who have a lot of hate in their heart, that hate will be transferred. If you spend time with, with a lot of toxic people and one of the toxins is that they are irresponsible, if you're around that person a lot, the tendency is for their irresponsibility to become your responsibility. And so what happens over time is if you're with a toxic person, you tend to become a little bit of a toxic person. The challenge is we think about this and we're all going to be able to identify toxic people as we walk through life. We know you're that toxic person. The challenge is sometimes turning around and seeing where it is that we are toxic. The thing about toxic people is that everybody knows one, but no one is one. It is really easy to see that somebody else is toxic. Somebody else has those toxins that they are transferring into the relationship. But it's really hard to see where you yourself are personally toxic. So how do we become Christians? Who don't get easily offended how do we practice this deeper level of maturity where toxic people don't affect us they may say mean things act cruelly respond rudely but how do we continue to be like christ and love them anyway now the reality is there's a lot in life we could get offended by but when it comes to personal relationships god says get over it as much as we can, try not to be offended by other people. In other words, if you wanted to, you could have such a thin skin, everything everybody does offends you. And you're going to be unhappy most of your life. So you've got to learn that emotional and spiritual maturity is largely determined by how you treat those who mistreat you. Let me say that again. How mature you are emotionally and spiritually is largely revealed in how I respond, how I treat those who mistreat me, and how I treat those who misunderstand me. Do I do tit for tat? Do I get even? If they hit me, do I hit them back? If they hurt me, do I hurt them back? If they insult me, do I insult them back? If they get angry at me, do I get angry at them back? Then I'm no better than they are. Emotional and spiritual maturity is determined by my reaction to the people who try to hurt me. You know, the destructive people, the disapproving people in my life. How do I handle those kind of people? I'm convinced as I thought this through. That the church is a fertile ground for toxic people to grow. Because we are compassionate. Because we care. Because we are patient with people. Because everyone that walks through that door, we accept. And we want to help them. We don't think that we need to establish boundaries. We don't ever think that we should ever tell someone, enough is enough. Our greatest strengths, I submit to you, are being used to become our greatest weaknesses. I like, to, I like to play the, um, it's not a fun game to play, but in a, in a sense, the, if I was sitting in game, if I was sitting and I wanted to destroy the church, how could he destroy the church? 
I could say the easiest way or the greatest way is through toxic people. And you say, what about false teachers? And of course, we're not above that. And okay, you say, what about sexual immorality, especially amongst the leadership? Yeah, we should be careful in those areas. Okay, okay. How about physical harm? But that's why we have a whole security team here about financial impropriety. Well, of course. But what I'll do is this I'll send to the church toxic people. Maybe three. That's all it will take. Three. And they can successfully destroy a church of a thousand. Because I'm Satan and I know the scripture well. I know Galatians 5 9 that. Just a little leaven can leaven the whole lump of dough. I know 1 Corinthians 15:33 that says, Do not be deceived, even though the church is oftentimes deceived. But the thing is, bad company will always corrupt good manners. I could be effective, I could be really effective. I will put them in every small group. And when it's time to discuss the Bible in a small group, I wouldn't let them discuss the Bible. I'll make it all about that person and that person's problems. Every single Thursday night that they meet, I will get the spotlight off of Jesus Christ and put the spotlight on them. And I'll get them to exasperate every small group leader and every person in the group that is showing up every other Thursday when they are dead tired walking off their tail all day to sit there and go. Why do I have to listen to Mrs. So-and-so again for, for another 45 minutes? Why am I even coming out of this? And I'll get a small group to pull on that person and pull on that person and I'll see no, and I'll see no results. And the average person is going to walk away and be like, and, and say, you know what? It's really a waste of time trying to help you. And the moment anyone thinks in that small group, you know, we have to tell her, stop talking. Just tell her like, if you have issues you want to talk about, just talk about it with the leadership. Or maybe we've discussed this, we've given you solutions, but you're not implementing them. So this is not a, this is not a profitable discussion. But if we did that, that would be mean. That's not what churches do, because we've got to help everybody. One of the keys to happiness in life, is not for everybody, but... One of the keys is that you have to develop a thicker skin and don't get offended by so many things. Say this prayer, God give me a tender heart and a tough hide. Usually, we get the opposite. We get a tough heart and thin skin. But God said, no, no, no. You should always have a tender heart. But you need to get a little bit thicker skin so you don't always get upset no matter what people say. When someone looks cross-eyed at you or on the off freeway someone flips you off. Somebody's rude to you, a clerk, a clerk who's a jerk, somebody like that. And you know that, okay, maybe they're just having a tough day. You need to get a little bit thicker skin now. How do I do that? How do I keep from taking personal offense at the crazy makers in my life? How do I keep from being offended from these crazy people? How do I not get upset about these people? Well, one of them is just consider the source that a crazy maker and try to ignore it as best as possible. The Bible says to do that. Look at this first verse, Proverbs 12 verse 16. Let's read it aloud together. When a fool is annoyed, he quickly lets it be known. But wise people will ignore an insult. Circle the word wise. Circle the word wise. If you're wise, you ignore an insult.